All right, welcome everybody to the Monday, March 11th meeting of the Conway Select Board. And at 6.30 it will become the joint meeting of the Select Board and the Finance Committee. This meeting is being recorded live in FCAT and by Zoom. Um, if for any reason those recordings cease to function, it will continue live and in person here at Town Hall. I call the meeting to order. First item on the agenda, vote to approve the minutes of February 27th. Uh, those look good to me. Move to minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Um, we have three warrants. Vote to approve the accounts payable warrant of $196,354.50, the payroll warrant of $123,049.53. And the payroll deduction warrant of thirty thousand two hundred and twenty dollars and twenty five cents. Um, I've looked at all those. The only question I had, and um, I signed, I signed all three warrants already. Um, but the the question I had about the accounts payable to one hundred ninety six thousand. There was almost a twelve thousand um, dollar item for True Stone for um, under the emergency funding of the highway department. Um, and the, that was two different days, the 27th and 28th, where there was like 20 loads of stone brought in, um, 20 tons at a time. And um, I received a call from one of the neighbors that was upset about the neighbors to the, um, upset about the highway truck coming back and forth so many times with us with one load of stone. And so um, the question that I had. Bernie, if you could please look into this, is why was that, why were we having a highway employee make one, one trip for 20, 20 trips for one truck full instead of having them come and deliver? Do, do I did work? speak with Ron about this and it's cheaper to do it this way. That's what I figured. That's the right answer. Mm -hmm. um, so with that being said, I would move to approve those three warrants that I just specified earlier. Second. All in favor? Aye. Meetings attended by select board members. Um, yes. I, they weren't meetings, but I met individually with each department head to uh, discuss uh, further discussions on contracts. Ron, Don, and Barry. Uh, Erica? Um, just the meeting that we all were at um, concerning the stormwater management on Baptist, Upper Baptist Hill. The on Thursday. Oh, and the sorry, the frontier meeting as well. Oh, and that one too. Yeah. yeah. See, see, we're on a lot of meetings. Um, so besides those two, was at the um, emergency management meeting uh, with our state circuit rider, um, and uh, besides what Veronique outlined in her uh, report to us, we we're also planning a tabletop exercise for the fall. With, in conjunction with the town of Asheville. Um, and, uh, yeah, so public comments. Anybody besides those that are on the agenda? Um, sweet. New business. First item discussion with Tim Fortier about moving the Fortier Memorial Bench. Welcome to Conway again, Tim. You in Idaho right now? You in Idaho? Colorado. Colorado, close enough. Well, appreci yeah. appreciate the, uh, the the proper zip code hat, though. Um, right on. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, yeah. So, what what you want to you want to tell us what you're what, what yeah, you want to so do? If you want me just to kind of jump in for a minute. So basically, um, I did that bench years ago for my parents in memory of them. Right. And um, I was pulled by the select board at the time. In fact, it could have been the select men. I don't know when it'll change. Uh, but anyway, yeah. it's irrelevant. But anyway, I was told to put it there because we were always in charge of the Christmas tree as a family. And so they thought it'd be nice to be there. Well, obviously, when you plant a new tree and it's really small, something like that was probably not a bad idea. But as it's growing, obviously, it's growing kind of into the bench. Right. So anyway, so I've been asked to move it, and um, it's not going to be an easy thing, but it's you know basically been my business for the last 
for 50 years is uh, is in, you know, in the stone business and <clears throat> actually just since retired, but I had a, a title in the marble company uh, in, in Aspen, Colorado for the last 40 years. So basically that's, you know, the kind of thing that I do. So the issue is, is moving the bench from where it is. And then I guess to, to put it in the, in, the, in the general common in front of the town hall, is that correct? Um. In Veterans Park? Yeah. Well, yeah, the park in front of town. I know there's a whole bunch of people that would appreciate a bench like that they could sit at because there are a lot of people that, for various physical reasons, can't sit at all the benches that we have that are just a bench with no back seat. That has a back seat so people can use it and as an armrest so people can get up on down off of it. So um, I think that would be a very useful bench for a lot of people to be able to sit at again. But right now, that tree is, keeps anybody from going to it. Um, that tree is happy where it's at. Uh, so, um, unfortunately for the bench. Um, right. I, I so, think, anyway, I mean, is that where, if I was going to, you know, basically I'd have to drive back to bring some equipment, etc., to move it. And like I said, it's not going to be a very easy job. Uh, hopefully it can be done. Um, but anytime you're dealing with stone, you know, stone likes to crack. But um, but anyway, so I guess the question I have to you guys is that if I'm going to go through the trouble to go back there to move this bench, where is it that you'd like me to put it? And is there you know is there space to put it? Is there space in the bedrooms? Yeah, I think the original plan was you know the fence that's right there right. on the sidewalk between the house and Veterans Park. Right. That's where people have spoken about putting. I don't know exactly how. Which direction or anything, but but that's where they were saying would be a nice. And I don't know if anybody else wants to <laughs> weigh in on where it would be nice to have a bench. Well, we we can. Some of us have been you know, are particular about a desire for a bench. Yes, but I want to go up the hill halfway around the loop, so that's not a good. No. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so why don't we just come up with a um, map? Right, that we can offer Tim. Yeah, close by yeah. where it is now. Right, so mm -hmm. you don't have to, he doesn't have to worry about transporting it too far and worry about cracking the stone. W would it make sense for me to work with Ron about, in terms of mowing and everything else, where is the best space, you know, all that kind of that stuff? That too. Okay. And open space. And even, even ground. Yeah, I, I think that on, on you all, your all end, this all needs to get you know, resolved before I go back because I'm only going to have a, although I am retired, but just a few days to really put into it. So it'd be nice to know exactly where it wants to go, you know, sooner than later because I'm planning on going back the first part of April right. and probably be there to physically do it around the 8th or 9th of April. So it doesn't give you guys a lot of time if you have to you know, if you need a lot of time, let me know, then I can postpone my trip. No, we don't need a lot of time, Tim. And thank, thank you, thank you for, uh, thank you for all for what you're doing. Um, we're just going to check with everybody that has an interest in it, and that's not that difficult for us. We we remain a small town, um, and uh, you know, if 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 not Veterans Park, it'll be somewhere very close to it or in the immediate downtown down. Part of the village part, um, so but we'll we'll let you know exactly where. But do do continue with your plans to come back and do it, please. Um, okay, well, it means a lot to me to have it there. You know, yeah. I, you know, I was born in Conway and grew up, and you know, my parents had a lot to do with the swimming pool. And yep. my dad was the head of the civil defense. In fact, you probably don't, don't even know where the headquarters was for the civil defense. But we don't have to talk Conway trivia. Yeah, but no. anyway. You know, he, he, he had a lot to do with it. He was the mailman there for, for years and years. Yeah. And um, so anyway, it means a lot to, to have it there. And uh, to move it's not going to be an easy issue. Right. So if you guys could, you know, figure that all out on your end, then um, we can take it from there. Great. If we need to move it across the street, will we have to close the street at all? Will I need to speak with the police department? No, it'd be one of those things where I just got to figure out exactly how to get it across the street, but literally only take a couple minutes, so you know, maybe 
to get, get the, is Wemet still part of the police department there? No, he retired like two years ago. Okay. So, so actually, I really probably would know nobody there at all, well, except my cousin, Mark. Yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, so we, there might be a little direction there by the police department, but only for a few minutes. Great. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. So, so I'll definitely be in touch with you. You know, we can email back. Okay, and yeah, it, yeah. Right. So if you could maybe give me like a good idea, exact idea, because I got to get someone in there to dig up like three holes. You know, because I put that thing in to to stay forever, and so um, wherever it gets moved, hopefully it will be forever. And um, so it'd be a bit of work at the site where it's going to go to dig holes below frost so that the bench can stay in one piece like it has for, I don't know, I'm trying to remember how many years ago that's been. Do any of you guys know when I put that in? No? Um, yeah, that had to be 15 years ago, at least. Yeah, that, that would be, be my thought. I don't remember exactly when I did it, but, but anyways, I fabricated all of my, my fabrication facility in Aspen, and then I shipped it over to Orchard Supply and then they took the freight on it, and then I came out and, and did it. Nice. And um, anyway, so to make a long story short, um, yeah, so I need to know kind of exactly where it wants to go. And then I, I don't know if you guys are, you know, willing to, you know, give me a day labor from the town or anything like that, but that'd be appreciated. Um, so that'd be maybe something that you could discuss. How many guys and what exactly would you need? Well, basically, just somebody with a strong back. Mine has gotten weak over the last 16 <laughs> years. And, um, you know, just to dig me some holes. And uh, and then I got Mark, my cousin Mark. Yeah. I don't know if you know Mark. Yeah, of course. But uh, he lives at the bottom of the hill there going up to yeah. the transfer station. I'm going to my son. Um, All right. There you go. Yeah. With that? Yeah. Okay, but anyway, so I can get some help. But, if, you know, if there's any way that... You know, the town, you know, during a regular work day, um, so nobody has to pay any overtime or whatever, that'd be appreciated. So maybe that's something you could get together in an email for me and, yeah. and maybe an idea exactly where it wants to go or at least a contact for somebody when I show up that I could get in touch with to tell me all this stuff. Very good. We will. Make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. We can do that. And, uh... Yeah, so we'll see you in April. Okay, dokie, guys. So we good? Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very you much, Tim. All right, take care. You too. Bye -bye. See you. All right. Next is the discussion with the Council of Aging regarding South County Senior Center membership. So, and I'll just start with a little introduction to this topic. As you know, um, uh, I've been investigating on behalf of the Select Board the circumstances and wisdom of whether or not to do this. Um, and, um, but at, at this point, there, just from my perspective, there are so many uncertain questions and that it, it just doesn't make sense to go forward. Um, even if all of the unanswered questions were answered to our satisfaction, it still doesn't make sense to go forward right now at this point. There are um, there are multiple issues still. There's the issue of governance, of uh, were we to join. There's the issue of governance. There, there is an existing three-town operating agreement. There would need to be a four-town operating agreement. And in discussions with um, my colleagues on, our colleagues on the other select boards, there is zero bandwidth right now to deal with this before all of our town meetings. Um, there's also several big uncertainties involving the organization itself. They do not currently have a permanent home. They're sorting that out this year. They're also, since one of the hoped for benefits would have been an increase in transportation services for our residents, they have a grant application um, for, I guess it's USDA or DOT, I forget, um, for a, a, another van and a driver. Um, but that, that application is still pending. So we, you know, it, obviously if the grant, if the transportation services are increased from present, that would be more enticing than 
the present services. Right now, the van is available three days a week for all of its existing towns, and the service that they would be able to provide for us is really quite limited. So, um, <coughs> so that that's so basically I'm not going to put it in the warrant for this town meeting. Um, <coughs> aside from which, there are all those uncertainties. Which, and I do want to hand it to the Council of Aging. They were uh, just as a group. They really identified a lot of the uncertainties and brought forward issues that I had not considered. Um, and I'm grateful. Whenever anybody does that, I'm really grateful. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I definitely want to follow their lead. I saw that report that they submitted. Um, you know, like that's where that's our job is to serve them. And if our local seniors, <coughs> our local council of aging doesn't feel like this is a good fit, then I'm gonna I'm gonna trust their judgment. I feel like they know what they're talking about. And I mean, there there are I, I agree with that. There there are there are a group of of seniors that currently do use South County. Um, the, the, the number that South County represented to us was 15 Conway seniors that are there or use those services frequently. Um, but that, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, so, I mean, but the... But they're still, they're using yes. those services and we're not officially a part of... Correct. Right. Correct. So, yeah. And so, you know, it, it, the cost, you know, and this is the other thing, the cost to the town would be well, the, the, the official cost would be thirty two thousand um, dollars, and then thirty two thousand and change. Now some of that would be funded through the amounts that we get from the state, the the the, the, the amount that the council of aging currently that, that the select board gives to the council of aging every year is what nine thousand something, yeah, nine thousand something. So that would go to to, to South County Senior Center, um, and. You know, and, and the other thing is that the current operating agreement, there's basically very little in the way of governance to the director of the South County Senior Center. She reports to the select boards, but the Council of Aging in those three towns has basically atrophied and, um, since 2011. But, and, and I did, you know, prior to 2011, the creation of the South County Senior Center, um, all of those three towns had from what I'm told, vibrant and active council of aging. All of a sudden, you're paying someone to do the services that the volunteers used to do, and um, the volunteers just become consumers of the services rather than active uh, providers of those services for each other. And so that is definitely one of the things that, um, you know, that, that we're, we're aware of as well that we wouldn't want to lose the sound the, our, our council of aging in the process, and um, so you know what I what I when we were talking when I was talking to my select board colleagues about what an agreement would look like I said from, from Conway's point of view it's got to be there's got to be some layer between the select board and the director and hope, presumably it would be the council of aging at least on the Conway end. So, um, but again, we're not anywhere close to that happening. So, um, you know, the, the members, three, three members of the Council of Aging Board are here to answer your questions, to answer your questions. Um, and, you know, we've all read their, the summary of, their, their, they actually had quite a few more things that they identified beside, that they did not address in their summary. Um, but that's... And this is at least the second time since I've been on select board that this has come up, joining the South County Senior Center, and our council of aging girls <coughs> have very, like, there's a reason that they don't want to join. And like I said, I want to trust, I want to trust the members of our community who are, you know, making that decision. And, you know, the, <coughs> what the, the main, they, the services that they do provide, um, it's important to them and to the seniors in Conway that they continue in the format that they're at. And once you have professionals doing those instead of the Patsy Cocots of the world, um, then, you know, it would change. It would change. Um, and so, um, you know, and, and that's one of the, 
it might not be a change for the better. Um, and you know, speaking of which, they, uh, one of the things that I've been talking about for years, the, the, the Council of Aging's budget for con uh, in this town has been frozen um, at 12, not frozen, but they've never asked for more. Um, it's been $1,200 a year for I don't know how many years, a long, a long time. Um, the budget decides what the state gives us the, the $9,000. And uh, I know they, there is a proposal. I don't know if this has come to you yet. There was a proposal that was floated to me to about whether or not to increase their budget to three thousand, so that they could offer another day of the footprint. Oh, I did see. I did another see that. Yeah. No, um, or an additional yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so you know, we already did have the budget night for that um, because it was, which was not really a budget night because it was a flat budget. So there was no need. You know, we didn't. But that might be, and what I responded to Pat Lynch was, if you're gonna if you're gonna make that request, make it ASAP. Yes. Yeah. This is the this is the time, um, and and you know, and that the process involves like going to Veronique so that you can get it, so that we can then discuss it. So, yeah. yeah. No, I, I think I did see that, so I'll make sure that it goes on next uh, week. Because when I was at the meeting, I was saying, yeah, you guys, yeah, gotta ask for more money. So I'm pretty sure I saw that for a second foot clinic. So that's sort of unrelated, but related. Um, any other questions for our Council of Aging representatives? So at this point, we are not joining. We're not. It's yeah. not. It's not on the warrant not, for June. Yeah. So we're not. That's and and we have questions. That, we have questions that need to be answered to our satisfaction. To all of our and this is to that's what, what our means. Hour. 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 And the first time did we still have the same issues where there were uncertainties in their plan and pretty and much how it processed? Okay. Yeah. I mean I remember there like this was very early in my tenure, but I do remember that it was very clear that our council on aging didn't feel like there was a benefit there. And they had a lot of reasons for that. And just so that you know, we also reached out the Mass in Motion group, um, which is well represented by, the, proportionately, by the Council of Aging as well, um, did reach out to the Shelburne Senior Center, which is which includes Shelburne, Buckling, Ashfield, Coleraine. Coleraine pulled out. Coleraine used to be, but they pulled out. Um, and that would be 40 something thousand dollars a year and they offer less services um, and it's a pay, it's a fee a pay as you go fee for services kind of a thing whereas south county is not structured in that way so um, yeah but south county does charge for certain things correct if there's a class or whatever right. and you're not a resident of any one of those three towns right. you would pay five dollars <coughs> more than the resident does right. But you can sign up and take the class. Right. And if it's free, you can go free. And the foot clinic would still be fixed about the same fee structure as we have here in town. Yeah. But the people don't want to travel to, to South Pierce. Yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. so, they have bad fee. <laughs> so you know what what you know what I what I, I to to me until we get all of the uncertainties resolved, like there's I'm not ready to throw in the towel or, or say, you know, no, because there's still a lot of unanswered questions. And they might not all be answered to our satisfaction. But to, to me, there's, we're, uh, personally, I'm, I'm still open-minded, um, but definitely not this, for, for this June. Um, so. Yeah, I think our Council of Aging has made it clear that they don't see the benefit. Yeah. And I'm going to trust our there has to be a, until there has to be a benefit. The point at which I joined the council. Yeah. Right. There, <laughs> the, the, it has so to. So thank you for your good work. And, and that's and that's part of it. I mean, the benefit yeah. the benefit should be clear and obvious to everybody. And so, it hasn't been. And, and it's not it's not obvious to me. It's not obvious to you know. It's not yeah, obvious I say to one thing is that uh, anybody who's over
Greenfield advertises yeah. that you can go there for meals uh, as a senior anytime. Just yeah. call and make a reservation. I mean, it is services from the other towns or other senior centers are available to anybody. Anybody in the state of Massachusetts can right. come to any senior center. But the, the big deal is transportation and the thing to do is for us to deal with the RTA and not through a senior center at all. So. And while we don't have a senior center, we have a very active group that does right. participate in our meals, our foot clinic, the yoga, and all of that would probably go away if we would join South County. Yeah. And people like staying local. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so that's, that's the news on that. Thank you. You are dismissed. Thank you. Understanding our understanding our our point of view. Yeah, keep me over the head long enough. I'll understand. <laughs> Come to our corned beef and dinner, uh, cabbage dinner on uh, Thursday and see. All right. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, all right, Jason. You still want a hay, huh? <laughs> yeah, I haven't managed to shake the bug just yet. All right, good, good. Um, yeah, I mean, I looked at the contract. It's just, you know, I, I like I like the co cooperative thing with the, you know, with the Boyd and everything. It's a great use of that property, I think, and um, I personally am glad to see you keep using it. So. I agree. I. So I have not updated, I have been, um, I'm just waiting for town council just to get back and, because I don't think she's It's the same as like it's, there wasn't any changes. This is the one from before. I didn't put oh, a new one together. Well, that's why it looks the same. Is what yeah. I'm saying. Right. But it's right. probably going to be the same, yeah. right? I imagine it will be yeah. the same. Yeah. And I can bring that to you to sign like at the next meeting. All right. I just wanted to run it by town council before. But, yeah. but if the board's good with all the provisions, then. Yeah, I'm good. Well, yes, keep paying. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, thanks. And to be clear, I wasn't proposing any changes. It's worked out well, and it feels like a, a rare win win win. So I'm I'm yep. grateful for yep. it. Thank you. If there's no changes to it, there's no. It's probably also a good idea, though. I mean, just all right, all right. So I'm, I'll just make a motion, though, that we we sign the haying contract with Jason Silverman, um, consistent with last year's haying contract, with no changes from that besides the date of the hike. The, the, not last year, the last day. So, um, and uh, pending approval by the town council. And I'll have that for next week to sign. You need a second? And then I can email you a copy, Jay. Okay, that's perfect. All Thank you so much. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so unanimous <laughs> approval. So there you go. Thank you, Jason. Thanks. I appreciate it. Sure. We appreciate it. Thanks. Um, Jan. Approval on pickleball court in-house cost estimates and payment. Where's She's um, online. No, she went on. Oh, uh, <laughs> I was looking for it too. I was like, I just saw her. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Wow, you got home fast. Stairs. <laughs> yep. All right. Um, so, uh, I thought the pickleball court was going to be a um, CPA matter. Yeah, so, but I'm, I'm here to discuss a small detail with you. So the, the plans for the pickleball courts are moving right along. I've met with uh, the grammar school again, and I met with Kristen and Darius just to update you quickly and have their support. And they have a couple of concerns that we're going to address with um, some signage for to keep people driving slowly and so forth. And um, so Wednesday is our big night with the CPA committee. and. I think uh, hopefully I've got all the questions answered this time. We'll be able to move forward. There doesn't seem to be any issues with uh, conservation or open space or anything like that. So the, the thing I came here to discuss with you tonight is a little bit about the finances. So uh, as you know, uh, we're asking um, for uh, 100, 140000 it is right now. And 93000 of that is in the construction costs and in 
um, creating the pad until the tennis court company takes over and does the fencing and the painting and so forth. So it includes the site work, it includes this, all the site work and blacktop, which Ron Sweet is willing to do for us. And in turn, we want to pay him overtime uh, after hours. So this is outside of his regular uh, job purview. You know, it's not highway maintenance or road maintenance. It's a special project. So I'm looking for your uh, permission to, to pay him overtime for this project. So I have a figure of um, an estimate uh, up to, you know, we, we always overestimate for the project, but it's up to 200 hours and his overtime rate is 52.73, so it's $10,500. So again, this is up to, so he would be paid by the hour and I, I think probably it would be quite a bit less than that. But I want your approval, just knowing that, you know, it's a salary position and this would be additional overtime. So, I mean, right, right now, he's a managerial person. He does not get overtime. There's not additional overtime. He never gets overtime. So Correct. The, for the position he's uh, in for the highway, super highway, whatever his um, title is. This is outside of that. This is not expected in his daily duties. It's a additional so, project. I mean, it's because uh, well, we've never built a pickle ball court before. So <laughs> we've never had, but basically, I mean, you know, he works for the town. He works, he's, the, he's a direct employee of the select board. Um, the scope of his work is determined by the select board. It's, yeah, it's true. He's never been asked to do a pickleball court site right. plan before but it is were town meeting to vote this and the select board instruct him to do this um, it would be town work for a town committee on town property and he, he can organize his work day or his work week um, generally as he sees fit and not do I don't think the town can afford to take uh, 200 of his hours and put it to its pickleball court. No, um, we definitely can't. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I'm, I definitely wouldn't, I'm not like a fan of creating new precedents for the, the whole idea that, oh, there's, you're asking someone to do something that you haven't asked them before, so therefore you need to pay them overtime when it's not an overtime eligible position otherwise. Like that's a bad precedent. Um. I don't often agree with Phil, <laughs> but um, but Ron hasn't been paid overtime for any of the overtime that he's actually performed in service of the town. Is that correct? Correct. Um, that's correct. Yeah. So I just I think I have to wrap my mind around this a little bit because I don't I don't have a problem paying him for overtime for, for for any of the overtime that he's performed and even even for this particular project which we've approved spending you know CPA funds on at least the select board has um, but I do yeah I just um, I don't know I'm having a little difficulty with this particular yeah so there's a there's a couple of things like I said I don't I don't think you can afford to take 200 of his hours away from his daily routine this is a after hours above and beyond project that seems to me to be uh, and you can correct me you're his bosses obviously but it's a vol voluntary thing um, and so if he weren't going to be paid, I don't think he would volunteer that much time, and then we would have to look at hiring somebody from outside, paying prevailing wages, and the project, I've, I've gotten current estimates, the project goes up to about 350000 So it's, it, it's, I don't know, it seems clear to me that, yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I totally get that. Totally Will the funds get... come out of... CPA? Yeah, that's my question. <laughs> Where are the funds coming from to pay for if we paid overtime? Yes, it's all it's all part of the project, so it would be CPA. But you know, I Ron is the town's employee, and you are overseeing what 
what happens. So I figured I, I need your permission to pay those hours no matter what funding source it is. Um, yeah, so, I mean, right right now, I, I mean, he, the, his budget that he put in for his department, I believe, stated that his current salary was 70, and he asked for a $9,000 raise. So no, it's no, 73. Yeah. It is 73 and change, yeah. yeah. And he asked to go to 79. 79 plus mm -hmm. overtime. And, mm -hmm. and then plus overtime for snow removal. Right. Mm -hmm. Not for regular overtime. And he stated that, you know, and we all know how, how many hours he works. He works crazy hours. Not crazy, but like, he works way more hours than 40 every week. And, um, and he stated that he wants to do that. He comes in, he sat here and he said, you know, he comes in Saturday and Sunday because he likes getting ready for the next week. There's things that he likes to do, catch up on, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, that, that's his, and he said that that's his choice and he's not asking for overtime for that. And so to me, it's not really pulling him off of road work. It's pulling him off of Saturday, Sunday stuff that he likes to get catch, on, catch up on anyway. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I don't, the, the basic premise that, that he, I, I don't really agree with the basic premise that if he does this, he can't do his road work. So I, I don't know. I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm a little torn too. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm torn on that part, but I'm also of the mind, like Jan's saying, the guy's going to be saving us a lot of money um, instead of using an outside contractor. And I think there should be incentive behind that. Um, you know, saying you save the town a lot of money, you are owed this because it's your working hours. I'm more concerned about where the funds are coming from. So if they're still coming from the CPA, I don't necessarily yes. see an issue so, with it. Um, well, other, so rather than overtime, um, my pre if you know if, if you know, why can't you just do a stipend, an extra a stipend in your CPA application form rather than overtime? That's an idea. An idea. We might have to pass that by the attorney. Can I just chime in as a member of the personnel committee and as a member of the finance committee? Go ahead, John. Um, yeah, this I don't think it's good precedent for us to compensate him outside of his current compensation structure. Um, if we decide at some point, because we're reviewing this all now, we'll make a recommendation to you guys. Um, but we can't just ad hoc make things different for this. Um, what we might consider doing is setting up a separate contract for this particular project, right? So it's outside of his normal salary work, and it's on top, but it's, it's a contracted fixed bid kind of thing. And it's not, it's okay. like so it's not overtime, yeah, it's not a salary or yeah. wage, you can be just a you, that's, a that's a stipend yeah, another you, name. Yeah. You can't hire him as a contractor to do basically the same work that he already does. Well, then we have we we can't just okay. ad hoc change his compensation. Yeah, but here's the thing. Also, he's, he, what what equipment's he using? Yeah, yeah exactly. I know that's right. the thing. Highway right. 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 equipment. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. coming from payroll, um, you you can't hire him as a contractor. Right. You you could hire him to uh, maybe do some painting or something like that, but uh, under construction, you you can't hire him. Yeah, so we, I mean, I don't see that there's a, I don't see that there's a solution here. We can't, we can't roll really it back. I don't know, it's just, it's, it, it does, it, it feels really complicated. <laughs> In theory, I just, yes, I, I, want. I hope, was hoping you would look at it as a, you know, a special project. It's not part of the daily work. It's not part of the highway garage regular maintenance. It's a special project. But, but, but uh, Ron already doesn't get overtime for... Special project. Special project. That, that, that's my, I mean, I, I, I absolutely feel like he should because he's gone. He did get hours. overtime for some of the highway garage. He didn't? Oh, no, he didn't. Sorry. Some of the other employees did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's, I, I just feel like yeah, if, he just, right. if, if he hasn't been paid, if he hasn't been compensated for all of the extra hours that he's worked over the past year, then it just, how do we, I don't know, it's just a little complicated for me. I wish it were not because I really... 
Yeah. yeah. I, I want it to not be. It's, it's a conversation that has to be had before we finalize the budget anyway. Right? Yeah, because I guess it's in the highway department. Oh, it's not an ice budget. Well, but this, but this request is that this is the CPA. Yeah. This is this is like the CP, that, Like we've approved this money. I mean, we've is the select it's not board. outside the personnel committee. You also can't give bonuses that are not performance based. It can't be project based bonus. Mm. So that's out of question too. So I think we are back to OT. At this point, I just, yeah, it's it's like the other two are saying, it, it hasn't been done before. So like, yeah, he's never got overtime before, so why does he get overtime for this as opposed to like all the other overtime? I just because it's a voluntary project. But it's not voluntary if he's instructed to do it by the select board, who is right. If you're willing to take two hundred of his hours, which I don't, but, wouldn't be a smart move to spend it on something like this. <clears throat> but you know, it's if town meeting votes for it, then the select board executes the desires of the town meeting. Like that's what you know. It's it wouldn't be us telling him; it would be us telling him, telling him to do it because the town meeting has instructed us in that regard. So it's like, um, uh, you know, that's and and, and I, I, you know, I get I get that it would take hours. Etc. But um, he, you know, he's there seven days a week already. Um, you know, it's and a, a lot of that stuff is voluntary on his part. He already volunteers and does not wish to be compensated for extra. Um, that's not good. But to ask him to commit to an extra side project is really taking advantage of him and not paying him if you weren't going to pay him. So I mean, did, you know, we we I, we, we deal with this all the time in, in other professional con in other professional contexts with the town that um, you know that the our, the, when 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 the school committee instructs uh, you know or or, or in a, uh, uh, the administration instructs faculty members to do more than they're currently doing, um, it's the right and obligation of the administration to do that. And you don't, you know, if it's within what they're already permitted to do under the contract, it's in, it's, the, the union members do not get to just say, I won't do it unless you compensate me extra. Like, it's, but, the, and this is the kind of precedent that would be set that, you know, it's the same exact reasoning. Like, this is your job. Like, if you're asked to do something that is not previously in the scope of your employment, that doesn't mean that you necessarily get uh, additional compensation for that. You just manage your schedule differently and set your priorities differently. And if there's some things that don't get done in the same time frame as they would have otherwise, then that's okay. Just, you know, I... I Sorry. Start a fundraiser. Hmm? Hmm? She should start a fundraiser. Have a GoFundMe? No, she start betting on pickleball. Have a start a fundraiser. Bet, bet on pickleball? Yeah, see if you can make that get half of the door. Yeah. Um, I put $1,000 on you, Jan, any day of the week. Yeah, me too. I hear, I hear she's pretty tough in that court. Um, so I, you know, that's All right, so um, where are we? Is that a unanimous decision, or is it food for thought, or where are we at? Would it make sense for me to run some of this by town council? Yeah, yeah. I feel like, I, I mean, my gut right now is I just don't feel like I'm qualified to, <laughs> to make this decision. But I just, uh, there's a lot of red flags for me. Um, so I would, So I next, don't want... next week, we, personnel committee is going to consider the proposal and yeah, discuss the okay. proposal, the pros and cons, and runs, compensation yeah. suggestion. Yeah, and I have some about that too. So, like so I think guys. this whole conversation should be tabled pending, mm -hmm. you know, conversation with town council and the next meeting of personnel. That's yeah, March 19th. That sounds great. March 19th. 6 p.m. here. If you come, we'll bring some cookies. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sold. <laughs> We've got it recorded.
All right. All right, Jan. <laughs> Thank you, Jan. I won't bring Snickers. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She's first, actually, on the agenda. I have to meeting in order. You do. I make a motion to call the Finance Committee meeting in order. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Thanks. great. And um, I make a motion to uh, also confirm the uh, meeting minutes from our, the last Board. two previous uh, Finance Committee meetings for uh, March. That's that February 28th. February 28th. February 27th. Our last meeting was the frontier. Yeah. All in favor? It's a second. Second? Yeah, and I already <laughs> want to stay there. All right, now we're going to be here. That's Okay, so first up is um, Gemma with the ambulance. Um, so you all probably remember from prior years, but the way this works is um, Gemma comes up with her budget, and then um, Article 2 is always flatly funded at 25000 So you can see right down here, oops, there we go. So this amount minus 25000 is this amount. So this amount right here will end up coming out of ambulance receipts, right? Yeah. So I just wanted to give that before Emma does her thing. Oh. Okay, so I tried as best I could to keep things relatively the same, but there were a few lines that I felt needed a little bit of adjustment. Um, our call volume has been increasing over the last few years. And the, the type of calls and the number of calls has been changing to more... I guess more severe, so we often need more, we need paramedic intercepts, which then mean we have to pay the intercept fees. Um, so that's why the, the transfer intercept line, um, I did increase just because, you know, as of when I was looking at what we had, what we had allocated so far out of last year's budget, you know, we were over half of that. Um, and we still have half a year left. So, um, or at that point when I was doing this, we still had more than you know half a year. What do you left. attribute the increased call and the increased transfer? Mm -hmm. More old people. Exactly. Basically, I mean, it, our, exactly. we have an aging population. Yes, we do. And that means that the calls get worse. The calls get more frequent. And more complicated. Um, so therefore, it just it increases all of that. You know, tenfold. So, and that's also why I went up on the hourly employee amount for the EMTs, um, just because we've been having more calls. So, there's more hours that get paid. Um, no, you got the ball. You got the way. See, I'm already having problems with other things too. Dog problems. <laughs> <laughs> you already have the ball. You have to wait. This <laughs> is. Gemma's got the ball, she's taking the ball. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what else did I change? I went up a little bit with equipment, maintenance, and repairs just because, well, actually, no, the maintenance one I kept the same. Um, at this point, the ambulance is, I mean, it's 11 years old. Mm -hmm. It's there's, there's more often maintenance that needs to be done on it. It's still in really good condition. The state inspector was very impressed last year when we had our inspection um, at how well everything was, you know, maintained and working and whatnot. So I'm not, you know, I'm not anticipating any major issues with it in the near future, but 
it is older, so there is, you know, stuff, stuff is happening. We've been having some uh, mostly electrical and wiring, and just as technology changes and things change, we, we've had to adapt. Um, is that something that we should potentially start a stabilization? Oh, we have one. We, yeah. we have one. Right. There's, oh, there's... So uh, how, how far away? We, have, we have about 220,000 in there, so we spoke yeah. about... 228. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. putting another 100,000 from free cash into that, which should carry us pretty well towards the next ambulance. Um, my anticipation is that we'll be looking at buying a new ambulance in probably the next three to four years. I'm hoping we can, you know, get, get to three years. Um, that's technically, it's, the state doesn't have actual, like, specs that you have to replace an ambulance so often, but they have guidelines and they, they recommend that you do it every 10 years. The inspector said, you know, we were good for at least another couple of years. You know, he was figuring another five years if we wanted to. Um, so, I've been talking to Chris, um, my assistant director, about we're going to start looking at different, you know, what our options are, where we want to get it from, what, you know, for what the price is going to be. Um, my guess is we're looking at somewhere in the $400,000 range. That's been pretty standard. Um, the last couple of years, there was a huge backlog and a huge price increase. The backlog has been getting better. The prices have come down a little, not, I mean, I don't know if it's enough to really call it down, but a little bit. So um, it's also going to be a matter of if we need to customize it or if we can find one that's kind of, you know, cookie cutter off the shelf that we like. Um, and there, a couple of the surrounding towns have new ones coming in. Um, Shelburne Falls has one coming, I think, next month that they got just, you know, straight off, kind of off the shelf kind of thing. They didn't have to do any customization to it. Um, so that obviously will keep the price down, um, but we're going to look at theirs and see, just start looking at the options and getting getting ideas and quotes and stuff in the next, we're going to work on that over this summer probably and then look at ordering probably in another you know, couple of years hopefully. So other than that, I mean, Billing charges, I went up a little bit on just because the more calls we have, the more the billing company does. Unfortunately, we also, a lot of our, our patients are Medicare, Medicaid patients, so we don't always get a full payment. We get, there's a set rate and that's, you know, what we get from the state. Most of the intercept fees are more than what that amount is, so we're automatically behind the eight ball when we're, you know, paying for intercept, um, plus you know the wear and tear and our hours and whatnot on the calls. But we're managing. It's not. I don't think we've had anything too catastrophic in the last few years. So. Um, any questions? Oh, go ahead. I have a couple of questions. How many uh, people are in the uh, volunteer corps now? Four. And how historically that that's below or average? That's that's low. Um, we're always looking for new EMTs. Yeah. So if you know anybody that yeah, yeah, thank you. wants to become an EMT, come talk to me. And the second question I have would be the amount of uh, calls. Versus the year before, what, about what percentage increase would you estimate that to be? Um, I would say probably about a 10% increase. I'm asking because I'm thinking, because we have the revolving fund for Medicare, Medicaid reimbursements for our ambulance, and maybe we might want to take a look at possibly having to increase that too, because we're going to be out waiting, money, waiting for money, for something to consider. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to. I don't know if we addressed it. Did we talk about line nine, which was the hourly employees? Yeah, I think Gemma mentioned that she increased it. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I have a couple of questions. One is, uh, there's nothing actually expended for 2022. 
Um, I'm just oh, that's, that's, yeah. I, I wouldn't go by what was expended. I didn't necessarily put everything in there properly. Sorry. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Um, yeah, because, I mean, the way it reads is we spent nothing in 22. We spent $3,000 over budget in 23. Uh, we have nothing in there for 24 year to date, um, but we're looking for a you know $3,600 increase. So I'm, I'm just trying to get a, a, a rationale for 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 that. Um, that was I don't know why the numbers aren't in here for what was expended the year in in previous years. That's fine, um, but your request is but 3,600 higher than last year. So yeah, and we have had, like I said, more calls, and as of, I think I did this in December, um, what I had from the, the account sheet that I get from um, Mike shows what, you know, what we've spent up to that point, mm -hmm. and as of December, we had spent over half of our, what was allocated for that line for this year. So that was why I increased it wasn't a lot over half, but it was it was still over half of what I would figure figure half the year we should have spent half the money or less. Right, right. right. and then the, you know the intercept fees would I would assume go up at the same rate. I mean, this was important. Is it do the hours go up at forty percent and the intercept fees go up at twenty percent because that's what the budgets show. Yeah, that would probably be about right as far as I mean. Because we've had more calls and more severe calls, there's more intercept fees. Right. But the more, not all the calls, I mean, not all the increase in the calls have required an intercept, so there's still, gotcha. okay. there's still more calls than there are more intercepts, I guess, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, we can, yeah. There are yeah. several calls that we can run at the basic level. I think that kind of gets back um, to Alan's question about, you know, what percentage increase have you seen year over year in the number of calls? Because that would help sort of frame the increased request per hour. Yeah, I mean, this year it's been, there's been a, a bigger increase than I've noticed in the previous few years as far as the call volume. There's also been an increase in the number of calls that we've been able to to respond to and, and actually transport on, which is then when we put in for um, you know, for a while we didn't have a lot of coverage during the day, so it was hard. We didn't, we yeah. weren't always making as many calls as we have been in the last year, two years, um, which is kind of ironic since we've had less EMTs lately, but we've been making more calls. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that's that was pretty much my my basis behind that, and I'm you know I'm hoping that we don't need to use that full difference in increase, but um, the higher the number, so less sleep I get, so. <laughs> so anyway, I have it regarding the capital budget request, which I'm assuming we'll take up when we have capital budget items, but just thinking ahead, if it's possible, you down your network, query around how much you get some real quotes for uh, an off-the-shelf uh, type of annuals to be able to propose that maybe we do. And so since we have extra quote unquote free cash this year to take uh, now the as the opportunity to further increase the uh, emergency stabilization fund. We put in, yeah, uh, John has put in a request for a hundred thousand to add to that. So that would bring us up to three twenty eight and then the thought was, well, with you know, revenue coming off that, interest coming off of that, that hopefully would be pretty darn close to what was needed by the time it was needed. Would we get any trade in value at all? Like it's three years from now, we're going to get right? Highway wants it, right? Yeah, I think wants probably it. highway wants it. Like yeah. with oh, the last okay. ambulance, that's what yeah. happened. Yeah. And yeah. So I don't, I wouldn't anticipate any trade in. I, I wasn't director when that all happened before, so I don't know if there was, I'm assuming there wasn't really any fund transfer. It was just like it goes, they, they scrape off ambulance and put on highway, and yeah. you know, they're. It's not like we got any money into the ambulance budget from the highway budget. It was just changing ownership of, yeah, of the vehicle in, in town. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't guess that we would get any kind of monetary. <coughs> not even for pickleball. <laughs> well, I, I have a, I have a question. Yeah. 
Go ahead, Lauren. Could, could, I, could I ask um, that uh, $2,000 maintenance, is that what it is here? That seems awful low. Um, is that really, um, is that really all that runs? Um, for the most part, it's, like I said, it's been pretty good. Um, we had, it's been more little stuff here and there. We do have to do tires this year, um, rear tires, which that's going to be a chunk, but, um, <coughs> the overall maintenance of it has been pretty good. Um, and Dude. most of it has been covered by you know, by by what's a lot you know allocated already for maintenance, we haven't. So okay, I just, so so do you know? Uh, you mentioned the state recommends every ten years. Do they talk about miles driven? I don't know. They probably do, but I don't know for sure what those what that is off the top of my head. Because I could see this being, I, I don't think there's a one-size-fits-all with something like this. Every town is different. Every town has different roads. Every town has a different number of calls. So I just think it's, uh, uh, you know, it's a matter of um, getting somebody to whoop the truck over every now, every, you know, every now and then, and you know, for its fitness. I mean, it's. We do I mean, go you want to this, a state inspection yes. every two years, and the inspector is extremely thorough on. I mean, and it goes through regular state, you know, vehicle inspection every year as well. So, between the state inspection of the vehicle and the state EMS, you know, OEMS inspection, <laughs> he goes through it with a fine tooth comb and a white glove. It's. Okay, that's good to know. Sure. <laughs> Okay. Um, Thank so you. It's been it's Thanks. been good, a good good vehicle. Where's the uh, fuel cost? Um, the fuel cost is covered by the town, so we don't we just take get it out of the diesel tank and then write it down. Got it. Um, I'm not sure. I think that might be under Ron's budget, isn't it, for all fuel for for town vehicles? Okay. Uh, so here the, uh, the Narcan settlement money that we're getting or dribs and drabs over the coming years. Are there any features in the ambulance now that are particularly for responding to overdose? So I'm thinking, could we slide some money from Narcan over towards the ambulance for equipment or anything? That's a good thought. Um, I mean, specifically for overdoses, we obviously have to have Narcan. Yeah. Um, I mean, for any particular kind of equipment or capability in the ambulance? Might not any, not really specifically for overdoses. I mean, it's all it's equipment that if somebody is in cardiac arrest from an overdose, then we're going to use the same equipment that we would yeah. use on any other cardiac arrest. So, but other that than kept, you know, you know, that, that's enough. Yeah, I mean, that's enough of a relationship. Yeah, that's a good idea. If, I'm just thinking because we have a we'll lot too much money to spend on our camp, which only lasts for what a year. Then has to get thrown out. Depending on yeah. A year, maybe two years at the most. I, I know we had some that. responses because people didn't need that service, but you know, it's not a large amount. That's a good so idea I do have it in my town administrator. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right, but <laughs> to, 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 to delineate cardiac arrest equipment <clears throat> as something that could receive a separate source of funding. Is yeah. that possible? Yeah. Is there something other than an AED that would be um, necessary? We have the we That's have the Lucas um, compression device. We have a DFib. Um, I don't think I I don't see that we would need like a second Lucas or anything like that. Um, potentially getting a newer AED wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Um, you know the one that we have is I don't know for sure how old it is, but I think we've had it for as long as I've been in EMT, which it's been a while. Um, it's, it's working fine. We haven't had any issues with it, and it goes through its maintenance cycles and stuff. And um, but I so don't. That, that's think potentially something that you could get uh, new, and then the town hall or town office could use one, right? We talked about that. Well, that's what I'm trying to look into, yeah. and that's why in my report I said, well, it isn't just as simple. I gather as us just saying, yes, let's vote to use the money this way. There's a little bit more that we might have to do, but. The Board of Health is interested in um, getting Narcan kits for the town hall and for the ambulance. And then I and Don are both interested in getting AEDs um, 
um, defibrillators for town hall, town offices, and for his cruiser, and we could do another one for ambulance, you know, upgrade. And it, I have heard, I don't know if it's really, you know, that big a deal, but I've heard it doesn't hurt to have all the same model of defibrillator in the town. So if we did that, it would probably be nice to be able to upgrade all at once to the same thing. But. Yeah, probably. I mean, I, that would be my recommendation if we're going to get a bunch of them. A, you might get a somewhat of a price break from one of the companies if you, you, know, if you say, I'm fine with six of them. Then, um, and having the same kinds, it, it just means that if anybody is, you know, wherever, you've got familiarity with, with the equipment and it also is interchangeable. So if, you know, if you need extra pads or whatever, you can just, it's all, it's all the same. So it's, it's definitely, continuity is a good, it's always a good plan, I think. Any further questions, Roy? No, 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 no time. Thank you. Thank you. So this one's pretty quick. Um, and I love these guys. This is the veteran's budget. I love it because I already have my FY25 invoice ready <laughs> to pay for July 1st. Um, but so basically here, these are the benefits that they estimate we will have to pay out. And this is our share of operating expenses. And then I did take out a little bit for the flags because nothing got used this year. Um, the board can add it back in if you like, but since nobody has purchased anything as of now, I figured we might be able to take it down a little bit, especially since we also have another uh, special revenue fund for the flags. So and these numbers just come right from the Upper Pioneer Valley veterans. So good. Good. Any questions? No. Any questions? No. Roy, any questions? Thank you. And so, which one do you want to do first? Frontier? Is well, Frontier, because that's a voted budget. That's an actual that's real budget yeah. that's voted. The yeah. grammar school is still a hypothetical budget until it's voted on Thursday. I thought it wasn't voted until the 28th. That too. Yeah. It's, it's the open meeting. The hearing, the hearing is Thursday. Is, yeah. And the, 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 the vote is the 28th. Okay. So everybody's got the frontier. <coughs> everybody was there as far as I could tell, right? The meeting was yeah. last week. Yeah. I certainly can't do anything to explain any better. <laughs> Shelly is amazing. I love her presentation. I think it's incredible. I know, you walk away yeah. and you're like, of course. Yeah, it's so well, good. They approved the trainer for the uh, funding department? Well, I don't um, wasn't that no, the trainer is not going to be on the budget. That wasn't approved. It, okay. Um, there are work, there are scenes, if there's a way that that can happen, but it is not going to be on the budget. Mm -hmm. and, um, but it may be in the building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, so, and, and I'm, and I'm, you know, I was the only one that didn't want to pay for the trainer out of the budget, and I'm sorry. Well, maybe fewer students will the trend will continue with less students. I, I just, you know, what, what I said what I said is when children are hurt and they have concussions and symptoms, just don't play. That, that the era of <laughs> take me up coach, it's only a flesh wound, is just not Well if they if they didn't mobile lawns as often as they we cushion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, but they're, they're, they do very much want to get an athletic trainer. The overwhelming majority of the school committee yeah, does, and um, and there's a belief that they're going to be able to make it happen outside of the budget. Oh, cool. um, you consider the trend of fewer students going to charter school? Well, that, well, that is a very good trend, and um, good. Yeah, I mean, just but budget-wise, it's a very good trend. What the state should do is fix the funding for it. But, um, so just let you the, know oh, the, the budget changed though since you were all at the meeting oh. the budget changed yeah. it went, it went the school committee 
the, so, but basically, um, as the meeting was ended, the Deerfield Finance Committee came and um, they were well over the amount that would trigger a Prop 2.5 override oh, yeah, on their yeah. budget. Yep, yep. And they came to the school to help. But by restructuring, um, so instead of, uh, you know, instead of reducing uh, uh, the debt entirely, um, to not reduce the debt entirely so that they can still use the previously voted debt exclusion um, to get themselves out of there. But it wouldn't change the overall numbers that, so, um, so the, that was one of those things where the school committee can help a town and it doesn't cost the school committee any money or the town's any money. It's just, you know, it's, but the, the only thing that I had sort of not objected to, but I was like, you know, that request should have come from, like, formally, rather than have the school committee be the bad guy at town meeting. So um, the way that we dealt with that was by, um, we, we, had been, we had saved in reserves a million dollars to pay for the roof and the parking, um, which the estimates were like 800, 900, that, whatever, and just to have a little bit of a cushion. So we decided to part, the school committee decided to part with an extra 100,000 to lower the assessments to fix Deerfield's problem as well, but it, would, it lowers, that 100,000 lowers our assessment yeah. proportionally in that amount, mm -hmm. 16,000, 17,000 or whatever. Oh, good. So, um, so, yeah, um, so instead of the 5.1 whatever that was when the public meeting ended, after the school committee met the next day and voted the budget finally, our share was reduced by our percentage of that 100,000, so that it's now 4.87 mm -hmm. instead of, uh, yeah, or in, instead of, so it's a $16,000 yeah, so, good. so that was, yeah. it should be more palatable. The, what, so do you what, feel, so do you feel that 48? Yeah. Phil? What's that? Do you feel about 48? Deerfield is 48% of the students. So they got, of this 100,000, they got 48 that they saved. Right. That made the difference on their two and a half override? Um, that along with, that, oh, that, along yes. with the, that along with the budgetary maneuver of, the bookkeeping maneuver or whatever. Yeah, of, yeah. yeah so that they, they were. So they that close. It yeah, did, it right, did. Yeah. Well, no, it, besides that, we, they, we instead, I guess it was like a, an amount um, 40 something that 40,000 something that instead of reducing the debt all the way to zero like we had planned right. um, we keep we kept that amount of debt yeah. for the town for, for whatever so yeah to pay whatever for the budget process to pay off so they're not yeah, yeah um, so but the the one six I just took no, that out of there no the operating the operating budget Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That would be that is the <laughs> So I, I've asked Thank Shelley you. to let me know what go. part of this operating is transportation because it just yeah. seems good to put that in there every year just to have a clue. She was supposed to send you the transportation contract that it sets it all out. I haven't she was. seen it. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I'm sure she's busy. But this is what I see on the, all I did was take out the capital assessment because that came off. That's what, and the change was exactly the amount of capital assessment. So it's now just the. Transportation came, the contract, the new grid code contract came in higher than what we had all hoped. Can you remember 200,000? And, um, good goal. <laughs> and, you know, um, it's, it's still a lot less expensive per student mile than what all the other schools in the county pay. Grid only does Frontier. And, and the four towns. Um, and if we would have had to be part of that 
like have that front that county thing that our costs would have almost double. But it less of a savings than it used to be, even though it's still dramatically wonderful savings. So um So, Phil, this is correct then, right? That's our total, the one six eight seven four seven four. I didn't bring my notes with me. I'm sorry. Um, Here, I think, is that the... That's the email she sent afterwards? Well, it's going to be at least 5%. We know that the increase is going to be... The lower, the lower table? You're yeah. talking about Frontier. Yep. Okay. Yeah, because she took out transportation from capital. So, it's going to be at least 5%. Is, yes, that's correct. Is, that is correct. You got the right number. Okay, good. So, and you, so you're rounding up from. I, I like I like the four point <laughs> the actual number of four, four point eight seven instead yeah. of five. <laughs> uh, Psychologically, we're doing better, isn't it? Same reason that every retail store sells everything for $2.99 or $3.99 <laughs> instead of four. Is there any talk at all the possibility of getting some relief through the uh, rural transportation effort in the state? Or is that, is that a uh, So Okay, so actually last week that bill was reported out of committee um, to the let and Right before they reported out of committee, our old friend, Alice, Representative Alice Pish, you've heard me bash her for years now. She represents, she's been on the Joint Committee of Education for years. She makes a point of deep fixing any rural financial aid whatsoever because her constituents don't want it. And uh, she did it again. So the rural aid bill has been reported to the legislature. It was stripped of all rural aid. Oh, it's still called a rural aid bill. It no longer has rural aid. Where's, where's this rep from? Uh, I, yeah, from outside, outside of Boston, one of the one of the very one of the wealthy Boston colleges. Um, and she just has. How do you spell the last name? P i s c h. Close enough. Pish, pish, and when I, when when uh, Trevor when 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 Trevor McDaniel and I had the opportunity to corner her once and ask her why she does this to us every year. She said, because your concerns to my voters are niche, niche, niche concerns. Oh, so I always say, Alice Pish had a niche. <laughs> and, and yeah. Well, and, because uh, she got drove through Conway one day and she got a screen ticket and said, I don't know. She couldn't find us in a map, doesn't care, doesn't care. you know, her voter. She came out to Northampton once for a meeting that oh, we all had with her, and she left early once the questioning got hostile, because <laughs> all the towns in this area just have correctly identified her as the reason why we don't get any, if anything, any extra goodies. And they, once in a while, she'll throw us her crown, but basically, oh, nice. basically, she just refuses to... Well, we're looking at Mr. Ripcon here. Yeah. Real money. Yeah. So, but I mean, transportation did the transportation did go up, and that was a big reason why sure. our numbers are what they are. And um, you know, unfortunately, the common grammar school numbers are similar, and that's uh, I don't know. Sorry, I did my best on all accounts to hold it down. It's it's brutal. Yeah. Well, what's, <laughs> the, what's the degree of inflation right now? The higher Wait, than which that. year? I mean, yeah. I mean, right. Like, yeah. Well, actually, yeah. the year it's been over 10%. If you would call it, like, it's 8.5%. Yeah, year. so, I mean, this isn't, like, it's not unexpected. We're still looking at a 12% increase well, from 2021 until 2025. And the overall budget? Or? Yeah. Oh, no, you, oh yeah. yes, yeah, here, right. yeah, yeah. So, and, and it's with our union, the, our unions are on 2% raises this year. That's and it. that includes a year where school wasn't even in session. State Representative Peister is mostly, her, cause main, her main constituency is from Wellsman. There you go, yeah, yeah. So if this continues by 2029, this budget's gonna be 
fourteen and a half million dollars. I'm sorry, I'm looking at yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, say. I'm looking at total for here. Yeah. Not not the Conway portion. No, and, and, and a lot of it too, you know, we get you, you hear all this stuff about educate you know, the the Education Act that got passed, the $10 billion education act. We get none of that. All, all of that money, all of it, goes to 17 districts in this state. For all that, Ontario 495. That, and they need it. I mean, the, the thing oh, is, yeah, they need it. But we need it, too. And it goes to all the, the ones with a significant homeless student, unhoused student population, a significant English a second language population, etc., and that are historically terribly underfunded, um, but we fit in, we're like just a, like just like our town in the state, we're like a middling district in these financial things. And well, just the fact that property taxes funds public, I right. guess it's like that, it just and goes I, back and I, that's the as, whole, I say this every year. Elements. You get rewarded, the, poor, the bigger, more your population grows, the more you get the funding formula for state. We lose out on the ed reform thing because we, we get an extra $30 a year per student, and but we pay more than that in our taxes for the $10 billion that go to the 17th. Um, but, and, and then the, the other, uh, uh, the, the proportion of state funds in our budget is 19%. 1980, it was 46%. That's the whole thing. That is the yeah. whole story. Yeah, I think for town meeting, it might be helpful. Chapter 70 and 90 is going to be like a 10 year dollar amount, like a pie, like a bar graph. And then do the uh, using like GDP deflator, which is a measure of official measure of domestic inflation, like put that over it, overlay it. In real dollars, just see by how much that A is falling. And inflation just the dollars. Are you talking about the, the finance committee presentation of the yeah. 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 So are you raising your hand to do I that? Yeah, of course. That's a motion. Done. I mean, on the, uh, <laughs> on the infographic. Yeah, we're all learning one from there. But, you know, you can get the information pretty readily off of the Department of Revenue uh, website. They have all that information. And I think it does go back 10 years. Put it for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice right, to see. So we can I'll, work on that. It'd yeah. be nice to see in their budget line, line by line budget, um, next to salaries, how many positions are within that budget. You know, because I, I see some on here that show what appears to be one person's salary, and the increase is substantial. So it would be nice to see, like, okay, this line has this many employees. employees, and then also see, are there any positions that are filled by, is one employee filling multiple positions? Because that happens in schools all the time. You know, history teachers also the wrestling coach or whatever. Well, we yeah. do, actually, we don't, Frontier will not hire a teacher unless they have multiple subject matter certifications. Right, so that's what I'm saying. Like, we can't see that on here. That if one employee is, because of their extracurricular stuff, is making 200k a year, you know what I mean? It's not. Yeah, that's there's no way of looking at that. Yeah. I see that stuff. There's nobody making anywhere close to that. But mm -hmm. There are some positions on here. I'm like, I need to quit my job and start working for this school. Like, no, this you is have to work for them for like 30 years yeah. before right, you get right. to that. <laughs> Well, there is, there, is our, there are a couple of employees who are retiring and we can replace them to be paid at a lower scale because of the step ups. Yeah. But, you know, 2% COLA, 4% step ups, and that's the bulk of the uh, yeah. 8 of the increase is due to that. And that's and not, like, I don't Is that what it is? Is it a 4 step up? Yeah, 4% you know? step mean, up. So it's, it's 6 total? Correct. And that's negotiated. Yeah. And so the so the last step, the last contractual step, I think, is year thirteen or year fourteen. And the 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 problem is when when you have a bunch of teachers that are right at that step, mm -hmm. and that's what we're at this year. So that um, it's not that this individual step payment was that much. It's just that there are so many that are right at that yeah. year grade level that um, that are there. So. Yeah. Um, and I and every contractual bargaining thing I argue, you know, step steps.
the way that it is funded, to me, steps are anti-democratic. They're not something that town meeting can vote on. They're just baked into the budget, and I never, you know, it should be, increases should be salary increases, and it should be something that you have to persuade your towns to support rather than something that's just baked in there. So. Well, you know, anecdotally, I mean, I'm sure they're being accurate, but Shelley and, and Darius Modesto have both sh shared that the number of applicants for position at teachers in the parking lot has uh, increased markedly. Mm -hmm. and, and that, just getting teachers and attracting them and retaining them has become a bigger issue. And that, yeah. that's, that's also because we require them multiple subject matter certifications, yeah. um, which, is, which, which saves us a lot of money. Um, and it's also, uh, it, it, it's also true. I mean, when I was on the faculty hiring committee, which is now it's like been five or six years since I've been on that, um, I don't want to be on that, um, but the we we had a ton of applicants for open positions. Frontier, like a, a lot, uh, an overwhelming a lot. And job when, boards that for people who are uh, it, completely under no because because it, it's a district that's got the reputation of having support from its look from its towns, which a lot of districts don't, mm -hmm. and it's a district that is well led and it has a, a history and a reputation as being well led. With people that you want to work for, um, good working environment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And there's a lot of schools that are not that do not have those reputations. So, um, there, you know, we always get applicants that are currently employed in neighboring schools, charter charter schools, private schools would apply to go there. Um, and yeah, and that most and, and I know Frontier is unique in that respect, more or less, comparatively. So. But the only positive thing we learned is that the school lunch program brings, you know, brings money in. That's good. Of course, more kids qualify. Yeah, because they make pizza every day. That's kids, will, kids will eat pizza every day if you like. Mm -hmm. See? See? <laughs> there you go. But yeah. Um, I would drop it out. No, their salad bar is good too. They use no. the yeah. money maker. Yeah. So that's that's frontier. I mean, we could talk about Conway too, but yeah. so we, I mean, it, yeah, let's just. We, yeah, I'd rather yeah, talk yeah, about that Monday that, after yeah, the yeah, yeah, after yeah, the public hearing. <laughs> no point now. No, I did. I have a question regarding Conway Grammar School, the school interventionist. Of the four towns that uh, are part of the Unit 30, we're the only one correct. on the answer that at Canada hired the school interventionist, correct? Correct. And then, so, one question people are asking is it worth it? And I said, well, What do you mean? MCAS score has gone up as a result. Can we, can they we? have. They have. All right. Like it, every, um, they're, they're, they, they claim that there's really dramatic results from that and that. Um, it, not just the fact that, like this year, mo most school days they actually get a hundred percent attendance. It's the the interventionist does like a lot of family dynamic stuff, mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's like they they want to like keep it as a member, to keep yeah. it like. Um, but they're, they're, we're still, as a culture, really wrestling with the pandemic and the after effects of sure, it, and the school closures yeah. and. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, the statewide, the test scores have dropped dramatically. Conway, they've gone up. And we look at less school right now. Or something. No, um, but that's when you talk to families that are moving in. It's all because Zillow now says we're just like the best of the best. So Good. Take Conway. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So just um, thank you, Adam, for reminding me to remind everybody that the finance portion will start at 7 o'clock at the next meeting. Okay. Because we have uh, representative yeah, play. Oh, okay. We can always come earlier. Yeah, yeah. Tough question. Yep. And then next week will be the preliminary budget presentation and preliminary COLA discussion. She does, Natalie has been coming in most every year lately, but uh, this one in particular was sort of a Victory lap tour, a 1.245 million victory lap tour yeah. for us. So. so we can't ask her questions about rural aid to schools or anything. 
No, we no, can. I mean, yeah, you know, she can. She can, can you know, I. Um, you have a ticket the, to get in. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can tell you this the, the, the person who, the, the sole state representative on that commission is to retire and obviously not seek re election. So who is going to be the next? Western Mass Rep. Yeah. None. That is. Isn't that nuts? <laughs> You know, that says a lot right there. No, you know, the, right when Natalie got elected the very first time and she chose as her committee's transportation and tourism, uh, that, that had been her, her interest yeah. prior to coming on. And, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. And I remember saying, good, education is two-thirds of our budget, all of our towns, education is two-thirds of our budget. That's where we needed. Yeah. Um, and our prior state senator was on the education committee. He retired. Now it's Paul Mark. Or he was uh, gerrymandered out, too. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so um, the, for what it's worth, the breakfast in the Berkshires meeting, when is that? Saturday in Lenox? Saturday, April? Oh, yeah, you already tried to enlist. Oh, my enlist. goodness. We're going to invite us to Lenox? Well, he did. He, Fancy. He's yeah. trying to yeah. get he's he's trying, game, right? he, He's like, nobody. Yeah. Chris and I were already like new. So yeah, he's, he's, trying, like, he's trying to get. The finance committee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, but but the, at that committee, at, uh, he, he, he tried to, you know, he, he's like the, the chair of the Joint Education Committee, Joint House Senate Education Committee is going to be there. Oh. Please, you know, since you're the one that is always calling me up, bugging me about this topic, go there and bug him. And so. All right. Sounds like you should go to Wellesley. Yeah, I think we should go to the Wellesley meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's... Thank you. I make a motion to adjourn the please. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right, thank you. So much. Roy, thank you. Thank you. See, you hear that? Okay. Roy, did you get the time yeah. in the venue for our Seven next... Yeah, 7 o'clock. You can be there in person. That would be good to get there earlier. Uh, well, I'm going to be in New Orleans, so uh, if I can make the meeting uh, from there, I will. Thank you. Yeah, right. We're not going to see Roy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm sure. I was just in New Orleans, Roy. School That's meeting. why we had to reschedule last right. week's meeting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to make that. Where's your, where's your beans, Erica? Bye, Roy. Bye, Roy. Good night. Okay. Thank you, Thank you all. I do have a timeshare there. I haven't used it this year or committed to use it anywhere else. Um, town administrator update. Oh, you got a couple of reams on that. Oh yeah, veterans. sorry. The Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans Services District contract. That is. That's. I, I looked yeah. at that. That's what we sign. We sign every that year. every year. It's pretty much. It's reapplying for the same thing. Yeah. So. Um, I had one somewhere. Signed it's here. Oh, it's here. No, I got it. Yeah. I signed it already. Oh, you already in signed anticipation it. of a vote coming up to approve <laughs> my signing. Um, so, a motion to approve. A motion to approve. The chair of the select board signing in on behalf of the select board for the um, the intermunicipal agreement, the renewal of the Be Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans Services intermunicipal agreement. I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Here it is. Um, uh, discuss and vote to set the time for the annual town meeting. Town meeting, which I just discovered, um, to, I, I screwed up my son's high school graduation. It is at noon on June 1st. <laughs> and um, the annual town meeting is from 10 to 1. On June 1st. Whenever you guys, I don't think you've set it for this year. That's why it's on there, because I need to get the signs made, so I need to know what time. Yeah, and I need to know, too. So I could, um, I so, mean. So 10 would be better than, than 1. Or 12. Well, I mean, I can't change the time he was graduated. It's, it's right, new. Right. So, <laughs> so if, 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 if it's 10 to 1, I don't think I can make it. I can make it from 10 to 11. I can make it the first hour. If it's 9 to noon, I can make it for two hours. 
or we could do it on the 8th, but we already said it's the first. It's guess, in the bylaw says the first Saturday. Yeah, so and I, I guess I just yeah. didn't have so. kids in high school, or I just didn't think of that at the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so I'm, I'm like, like 9 to noon, I just would have to leave early. I, and, and I know that last time, like, it went so long that people felt like they're, I mean, we, we had an intermission, people went for lunch, we came back. Yeah. So earlier, I would be fine with earlier, but I, mean, I just we already think. we already will submit our recommendations, right? Yeah. And then we'll be represented by two of us. Right. So I mean, I don't like. I'm just I'm I'm just putting that out there. Like. I say we just keep it how it usually is, and Eric, we can make it for the time she can. And I can I can be there for. Well, it's been in the last three years I've been here. It's not been the same time yet. I don't think so. All right. <laughs> we've done we've done ten, then one, then ten again. Let's do ten. Yeah. Let's do ten again. Tens um, good time. And yeah. this is one of those things that it doesn't matter, half the people will be pissed. So where's our lunch? Um, yeah, and well, at eleven thirty when I have to leave, like that might be like the most of the meeting, you know, like <laughs> maybe yeah. we'll get the like yeah. the bad stuff out of the way. Right. So but yeah. I am just saying that if, if yeah, I I have to leave an hour and a half then. And it it was so over like when when we were doing it Monday night, I swear the whole town was just like, You have to change it Monday night. You can't do this Monday night anymore. It's cr we're yeah. we're up till one in the morning and everything at the end is getting rushed through. We make a terrible decision that we change it. It's like, why'd you change it? Monday night was worked so much better for us. You do it at ten o'clock and it's like, This is terrible, I mid mean, about one o'clock is better. You do it at one o'clock. Why did you change it? Ten o'clock was so much better. I can tell you, because years ago, because I remember when we had it like on like Monday nights, and I had little kids, and that was my same complaint. Like, I can do it on a Monday yeah. night. Yeah. So it's, it's so. like change with the times. Yeah. 10 a.m. Yeah. it is. Okay. All right. Let's so 10 to 1, I will, I, I'll be there. I'm going to have to leave early, because my last kid graduating from high school. I have to go. Uh, sure. Make a motion. To 10 o'clock. Uh, yes, I'll make a motion to um, have annual town meeting on June first. June first at ten from ten a.m. till one p.m. Hard stop. <laughs> <laughs> we used to do that too. Yeah. <laughs> Retracting hard stop. I'll make that motion. There, there are a bunch of towns in the state that do that three-hour time limits, and 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 then they, what? And then if, if you don't get through the stuff, then what? Then I'm like, like, yeah, like I just, I, I was just reading. The executive think the town of Med, the town of Medford does Second. four, the town of Medford does four nights in a row. They schedule it. Oh, yeah. God. Well, um, the, hey, you don't live like, in Medford, yeah. obviously. Um, um, all right. Aye. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, select board member comments concerns. I just have one. Can we strike? This unfinished business that's been on here since July, I just feel like this is like this this item is basically like climate change, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, I just feel like this is like this is all this is going to be unfinished business so long as any of us. It'll be test. three years going. Yeah. You're right. So, um, so I would like to to strike the this item from the agenda, um, and that's my that's my only. Uh, I agree. Issue right now. Um, we should always talk about it, but I don't think it needs to be. But, right, like I mean, it's, it's like kind of hanging over us, but it doesn't have to be on the agenda. I feel. Well, yeah, the the idea was to always have it hanging over us, but, but it but it is <laughs> like <laughs> it's 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 like climate change. Um. All right. I mean. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just that's that's my. Yeah, opinion. it's okay. Um. Yeah. Although, you know, it, the chair does, it's the chair's responsibility to set the agenda, but the chair must be, uh, must, must be aware of the wishes of its colleagues and respectful. Right, that's and the, the chair can put this on, like, new business if it's a thing that's happened in that. All right, that's receiving. a good point. Yes, you can, right, it, like, so. I, I don't, I don't want to, like, minimize the fact that right, so, that's a thing. So we don't need just, to do a motion, I'll just, I'll okay. just, I'll, okay, right. we'll, we'll just say. Um, that <laughs> works. Like, it'll never be unfinished. In deference, in so deference we, to my colleagues, I will uh, the, uh, just like say you can, for my you can take it out of the unfinished okay. business for the time being. <laughs> okay. I would also Go forward. I would also like to bring up one thing. I already had hit a fair nick about this, and we can talk about it later. But if you looked in the recorder, there was a, an article about um, Jim McGovern. Um, sending out quite a bit of community project grants and Conway was nowhere on there. So yeah, thanks Jim McGovern. I'm just, you know. Um, 
trying to figure out what those grants were, how we can get on it next time, talk to Jim and say hello. Well, so part of that is the timing of them. Part of that is having a wish list ready to go, which is why I told everybody, and you know that list from December 22, and I've been working on everything on that list. When this came out, we already had the dream team working on the public um, mm -hmm. safety building office. Um, that committee is not willing to take on more than one project at a time, so the town hall, I'm, I'm kind of pushing it even though it's like, you know, no, let's get this done first. So the question would be, what's our project? to put forth to them. So that, I would love for the select board to, yeah. you know, like I didn't realize I know it was so library. broad. I'm sorry? I didn't realize it was such a broad thing, a million dollars for Bernardston for their fire station. You know, I, you know, they gave a lot of money to Goshen for their highway department. Yep. I just didn't realize that was in purview of what we could ask for. Yeah. Yeah, and, and if I'd known about the library roof, that's something that after you brought this up, I was like, oh my gosh, we can ask for, because it isn't necessarily just, what was the project that, that was not a town? Uh, oh, uh, the, um, no, the, um, uh, what's the theater, the play thing? Oh, yeah, yeah, Double Edge. Double Edge. It was for Double Edge, right, yeah. yeah. So if, if that's the case, you know, boy, I'd love to, the next time this comes around, let's see if we can't get the library. All right, so since you mentioned that, the library, so I did meet, I, I met with Howard Boyd, the chair of the Board of Trustees at the, the Fieldmore Library, about the, because when I was in there the last time and it was raining, a, tra a trash can under the rotunda, just, uh, just, because town meeting, what, six, seven years ago, paid a lot of money um, uh, through the CPA to fix the roof over the rotunda. And I got to ask him because uh, there are rumors flying going all around town that the roof is in really bad shape. So I asked him about this, and um, and he said that there's really just one small leak in one spot. He knows exactly where that is, and rather than get a rather than spend library money, town money, or asking for help, okay. he, um, in April. I believe it was OESCO will be renting a lift, boom lift vehicle to fix something on OESCO. They've allowed him, they will be allowing him to use it for half a day. He will be, he himself has got the tubes of silicon, whatever. He himself, the chair of the board of trustees, will be going up onto the roof, fixing the one small leak that exists. He wants everybody to know that it's nothing to worry about. The roof is actually in really good shape. Um, it, it, down the road, when somebody else is board of trustees and none of us are really around, it will that roof is going to need like a three million dollar current price, like all new roof. But that's decade. That's a couple decades from now. They do have much more of a worry about the back wall, the back retaining wall, which it, if you ever seen it, it's sort of bulging, but it hasn't bulged this year any further than it did last year. But um, that's their bigger structural concern. So. But this, to the extent that anybody talks about the roof falling down, but not being cared for or maintained, he wants, on it. he wants everybody. Yeah, he wants everybody. You know, he's on it, and the police stop saying that. So we should people. definitely come up with some ideas then and push them in front of Mr. McGovern and yeah. say, "Don't forget yeah. about us," just because we're handling our own yeah. work. Yeah, that's inviting the bluegrass. Yeah. Right? And if they did double edge, <laughs> couldn't we just submit for if it's non-town stuff like the Conway pool? Exactly. Or the yeah. Exactly. That's just a, you know, I, I was just shocked seeing that and how much money was actually going You see out. that too? When you, when you look at the governor's budget at the end of the fiscal year and you see the goodies that, put, that get put in there on the last day of the budget, the same day that they're cutting regional school transportation reimbursement, they're giving all these, I remember last year I lost my mind when I saw that they paid for one of the wealthy towns, you know, uh, brand new street hockey rink. Like outdoor street hockey rink, another like brand new play. Everybody gets all these goodies, and Western Mass is nowhere to be found. Well, ever. you can go on the governor's website and look and see who would win previous rewardees, and a lot of the towns are the same. Yeah. And a lot of the towns don't need like the help that we do. Yeah, exactly. Well, we just have to invite him out. Yeah, we just invite him out again. He's, He's going to be here for the parade again, like he always does. Yeah. yeah. 
So uh, the mail, I guess you included the John Dixon letter to balance out the mail. Um, the the uh, um, I did I did have the occasion to speak several occasions to speak with Jim Moore about the letter. Um, Jim is a neighbor of mine, and he does uh, did apologize repeatedly for not knowing a lot of the facts and not understanding that um, you know the person that he complained of or whatever John uh, John the pediatric psychologist and surgeon etc was an actual person that lives on Upper Baptist Hill Road and speaks on behalf of a lot of his neighbors. Oh, so John Dixon is the one who basically said, we need um, a qualified engineer. Yes. To, yes. And, and, to, and to do stormwater management. Yes. No, yeah. And um, so, but, and Jim was the one that said, uh, you know, this sounds an awful lot like it's all Bill Cantor doing Bill Cantor stuff. And um, so he didn't know that the, that the drainage thing was paid for by the state. He didn't know that uh, you know that um, you know he, he didn't know that there's a whole organized you know more or less organized Baptist Hill community that is urging that these things be done and uh, so uh, he did you know say sorry to everybody about the tone and tenor of the letter and everything else so um, well so just to clarify for those who don't have copies of the letter. <laughs> Uh, there's people have raised concerns that there's a conflict of interest between our chair, Mr. Philip Cantor, and the fact that the property that we're talking about, there was another letter that was from the previous week. Um, yeah, I just want to recognize that, that that's, that's, that's been raised. I think a lot of people had more of a concern about the treatment of our and that's, highway yes, department yes. super and where that's supposed to take place, which I agree with. Um, I, I think that you know, some of the letters were a bit much. <laughs> uh, There's a lot but, of intense feeling. Yeah, but um, and on right now. that, that kept came coming up too. I did see the conflict of interest statements, but I, I saw more often than not the um, treatment of a town employee and, you know, how they're spoken to in front of a public meeting like this. So that part, I... You know, that's the one thing I keep trying to say to everybody is we have to watch our rhetoric and a lot of people are doing hard work and nobody's perfect and at the same time, it feels right that you know, we have these meetings for such discussions. It's just, they can, we had another, exec, one of the first executive sessions I had was based on someone not being nice to somebody else. <laughs> and that's... I think that's all we just have to keep doing is make sure that we're nice to our neighbors. Yes. That, uh, I, I agree with that. And, um, you know, um, the, when I first, uh, you know, Jim, Jim, this is a good example. Jim Moore was on the select board for a single three-year term. When he was on it, Rick Bean was the chair. He was on the select board when the then chair, Rick Bean, took his own life. And, um, and John Award. But his complaint always was that they completely froze him out of everything. They made all decisions behind the scenes beforehand. He, his opinion was never ever once solicited or even, they wouldn't even give him the time to state it. Um, and that, and, and that he, you know, and, and I was explaining to him that we don't, we don't do that as a select board. We decide things, we don't talk about these, what we're going to be voting on in advance. We actually obey the open meeting law. And, and that, the result of that is you got to work it out live and on camera. So and you're, um, you're, like, you're saying this is all about transparency? Well, no, no, but there's an element to that. I, I, I admit to, to taking things too far always, like ever, forever and ever. But, um, but there, there is an element that like we are also working things out live and stating our opinions for the first time. Because and we that, have to. That's because, the only because we have to, although those... Uh, those opinions could frequently be expressed in a kinder, gentler manner, um, but you know. Uh, yes. But 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 nonetheless, the, the the fact that they are being expressed is innate. It is part of what the open meeting law, the compliance with it, and the the, the, the doing things in public, in in you know transparently. That that's how these subjects arise. Whereas in prior select boards. 
they did not arise because they were discussed but, previous. And we have also not had a, a functioning personnel committee for quite a while. And so I feel like now that we do, this is an opportunity where we can very clearly say this is for the personnel committee and this is not for a public selective meeting. So now we're kind of in a position to, to do that. Very good point. So thank you, personnel committee, who's not here. But, <laughs> but I appreciate the work that they're doing and that they will continue to do. And, you know, and the same thing. We all work hard at this stuff. We all care. We're here because we care. So when you care about stuff, you can get carried away with it. And when you can only talk to each other <laughs> yeah. Yeah. once so. a week <laughs> in right. public, right. it does make it challenging. So I just, yeah, I, but I, I, I want to um, acknowledge and appreciate all of the public comments that I personally heard. Um, and I just want to, yeah, I guess that's it. Just, we're working on it. We're trying to be the best, you know, representatives of the town democracy that we can be. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so, um, um, there, the, so there was also a Chapter 90 letter from the state, um, if you saw that. Not enough. Yeah, the, the, that always what irritates the heck out of me, that they brag about how badly their funding is. Um, the Roadshow DPU, uh, you know, if there are people that might want to go to that, I'm not really one of them. But, um, and we just got a letter today from Eversource. They're going to be spraying herbicides all throughout our town along the power line rights away, which is... As they do every year? Which is lots of rights away. Um, it seems like they do it every time. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. Uh, and then the next... Uh, May I just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a lot of stuff on your... <laughs> you know, yeah, like for us to make decisions on. Well, um, yeah, there was a couple of things. The, ma the main one I just think it'd be nice if you could approve tonight, which um, is the Festival of the Hills wanting to hold the untagged sale again, um, May 18th with the rain date of May 19th. Motion to approve Festival of the Hills. Second. May 18th, tag May 19th, yes. tag sale. Aye. Aye. Uh, what about the handicap? Well, there's that. There's also the transfer station, the Facebook page. There were well, I think the handicap one's pretty important, right? Yeah, and that's, I mean, that gives, you have to pursue that with the state, right? 